This is everything we loved. See one, take one. One of the interesting things about Everything We Loved is that it stars the youngest ever actor in a feature role in a New Zealand film. It's this five-year-old boy called Ben Clarkson, and he's six now, um, but he's absolutely dynamite. And especially for a first-time director like myself, um, it was both very challenging but incredibly rewarding working with this little guy. He was amazing. We knew that this film kind of rested that it just couldn't be made without finding uh, a young four to five year old boy to play the part. Uh, the story just doesn't work if he's any older. Um, and yeah, it was this massive challenge. We cast quite widely. Unfortunately, you know, I made a lot of little boys cry during the audition process. Sometimes mothers would bring their boys along and you could tell quite quickly that mum wanted their boy to be in the film, but the boy didn't want to be there. Um, and eventually we found Ben in a dance class and he was, he was listening very carefully to the instructor and following like very carefully the choreography and he was repeating things over and over and over again. And I found a lot of the time with children, if you ask them to repeat something, they tend to think that they've done something wrong. Like if they did it right, why would they have to repeat it? Um, but Ben was very focused and he loved repeating things. And so that was one quality which made him outstanding for the role. And then we were so lucky, the more I worked with him, the more I found there was this imagination there. And we figured out that his feelings came from his tummy. So when I gave him direction, a lot of times we'd talk about what sort of feelings were coming up from his tummy. Because he has to do some extraordinary things as a young actor. He has to get incredibly angry. He has to cry. Um, you know, he has to be thoughtful. He has to be scared and that's hard even for adults to convey in a really convincing way and yet this five-year-old just smashes it out of the park. Yeah. And the best thing about working with ch child actors, I've found, is that it forces your adult actors to be better. You know, they, it forces your adult actors to be totally on their game. And um, I was very fortunate with my, my other leads, Brett and Sia, um, and I think you know, putting a child in the scene with them um, just helped elevate their work that much higher. The other fascinating challenge about everything we loved and part of what made the film work in a really interesting way is that my lead actress had just given, she auditioned for me when she was nine months pregnant and she had just given birth about a year and a, sorry, a month and a half before we started shooting and this was, this was a big deal, I mean it was her first child and what we actually found was um, she didn't bring her baby to set but she had to dash off between takes to express milk um, for, the, for the baby and the character that she plays is is mourning a terrible loss in her family and I don't want to give too much away but the feelings that Sia had for her baby that was at home kind of needing her she channeled that into her performance and I think that's partly what what gives her performance so much authenticity and you can kind of feel this yearning inside her. My leading man Brett Stewart had to learn a lot of magic tricks. Um, the magic in the film is real magic and if you look carefully at the scenes, if you watch them over and over again, you can actually see how they're doing it. Um, and that was quite a big challenge for him. He has to learn to levitate, he has to learn to make a matchbox move around and open in his hand. Um, he had to learn how to cut a woman in half. Poor Sia, we had to make a box specially for her. She had just given birth to a baby and then we were cutting her in half on stage. So I'm very pleased with the, with the magic tricks and how they tie into the film's theme of, of lies and illusion. We got the money by winning a competition. I've always wanted to direct feature films. Um, for a long time I wrote scripts and then the New Zealand Film Commission held this competition to find new filmmaking talent and they had about Almost 300 teams applied and they chose 10 and then it was almost like um, a reality TV show. They put the 10 teams together and we had to practice our pitches and meet with mentors and then we went away and wrote scripts. I also made a concept teaser and then from, from there they kept whittling us down and eventually we had to do a, a presentation of our feature to a panel of experts. and. In the end, they financed three from 300, and that was how I got my break. When you try and get a feature film up and running, there's an awful lot of challenges. 
but you don't come face to face with your 10 other competitors for a fund. Um, so that was kind of interesting, all being in the same room, all knowing that we were all you know, desperately wanting to get the green light so that we could have a chance of making our dreams come true. It was both rewarding and difficult. Um, it's rewarding because you're meeting other people that share the same dream um, and you can empathize with that. They want it as much as you do. You're meeting people that are prepared to, I guess, live the life of a filmmaker. It's quite strange lives. There's a lot of uncertainty. Um, so there's, there's immediately a lot in common and we all love movies. But at the same time, um, you know, there could be only a few people that ended up with their movies greenlit. And so I think we were all watching each other really carefully and we were all thinking about which ideas were particularly good. And in some ways it also made us be very specific with our own ideas. You know, the, the competitive edge, is, as stressful as it was, I think also made us work harder. It certainly did for my team. The money that we did receive came from one source. It was from the New Zealand Film Commission and it was under their escalator scheme and it was specifically designed um, to find new filmmaking talent and give them their, their break. Um, but to do a film that looks as, as good as everything we loved, because it looks amazing, we put all the money on screen, you know, we pay for it with our lives. So, you know, my, um, my art director was sleeping in the van, which is one of our props on set, and I um, lived in my parents' shed for about a year and a half while I made it. And, you know, my producer waived his fee, um, you know, which, you know, let's face it, was, was almost nothing anyway. But, um, so there's the, I guess there's the money that we received, but then there's also, you know, I guess the, the, the sacrifices or the cost, because everything costs money, it's got to come from somewhere. Um, and this movie was made with a lot of favours. Uh, and we were just lucky with the time of year that we shot, was sort of, there was no one else um, making movies at that time. So we actually got fantastic gear, um, we got fantastic resources, and I think it's a credit to my producers, they had such good will um, because of their personal philosophy that um, people wanted to help them. And that's very much the case with the New Zealand film industry. We've got the giants like Peter Jackson making these, these enormous films, um, and that tends to mean a lot of people in the industry, um, you know, they make some good money for a while, and then we've got the complete opposite, people like me that are just you know, at, at the bottom, um, but there's a lot of goodwill there. And yeah, this movie would not have been possible without a lot of sacrifice and a lot of generosity um, from yeah, the New Zealand film industry.